Initially, I was thinking about confession, but anytime we talk about confession, people really have their mind on, okay, confession of sin. So let's bring it to the main tool that does the confession, which is the power of the tongue. Everybody speaks. If there is one thing that Satan would like to take from you, it is the power in your tongue. And I want to repeat it again. If there is one thing that Satan would want to take from you, it is the power in your tongue. And why am I saying this? The whole world, I repeat it again, the whole world was created with words. God spoke words, and it came to pass. He spoke for the heavens and the earth to come into existence. He spoke, he said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. Let us, words. He brought that kind of idea, the mindset of creating what? Man, let us, words. So if there is something, the enemy will come after from you, it is that powerful tool called words. And that is what the enemy will do, what we always want to pursue. And so today, we play with a lot of words. If you listen to music, it's words. Isn't it music? Isn't it words? The lyrics of every song is words. And it drives, it can drive a whole group of people, thousands of people. So if it is bad, it pushes bad things into you. If it is good, it pushes good things into you. We are inspired by words. If you tell somebody that they are ugly, they will always keep watching their face in the mirror to see which part of their face is ugly. And if possible, try to straighten it up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, if you tell somebody that you are great, and you keep telling them you are great, you are great, you are great, for years upon years, right? You have a child, a young child. You start telling them you are great, you are great, you are great, you are great. That child will grow with a mindset of greatness, and he will live to be great. Amen. And so there is power in this tongue of ours. But the enemy has always longed to steal it from us. In the Garden of Eden, what did Satan do? He used words to deceive the Eve. And when he did that, what did Eve do? Eve also spoke back words. He stole from her, and then he was... He was able to get him to do the things that he wants her to do. So we have to know that there is power in what? In our tongue. And that is one of the gifts or greatest weapon the Lord has given us. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. And I know this is one of the popular scriptures. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat its fruits. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruits. If you speak evil about yourself, you eat the fruits of evil. And if you speak life, positive words to yourself, you eat the fruit of positive words. I want to share something with you. Looking at my family, my parents, my home, and where I come from, and the school I went, looking at how my infancy was, I never knew I could come this far. But there is one thing that really has worked for me 
And that is the power of words. I remember one day I was working with my daddy. And I told him that I'll go to school. I'll go very far. And my dad just looked at me. And he saw that this boy has some ways of possibilities. But me, I don't see that thing that he's saying. I told him and he just laughed. Because he didn't know that I'll come this far. I was young. I was in grade five when I said to him that. And I was constant at my words. At one time, I was working with my mom, and my mom was telling me, okay, you know, hey, for there's no money, so when you finish, you kind of, you go and learn a trade, and when you learn a trade, you'll be able to make, because this is how far I can bring you. I have done everything. And my mom really loves me. In terms of academics, she'll push everything. She'll sell her clothes just to take care of me. But that was grade six. And I looked at my mom. We were crossing the street to where she works, I remember. Grade six, sixth grade. And I told my mom, Mom, don't worry. I'll go to school. I'll finish um, grade six and go to high school. I'll go to the university. Now, when I got to... I was in, so I'm trying to transfer it into American education standard, right? When I got to grade seven, I was among my colleagues, so we used to walk miles upon miles to go to school. And as we were talking, some were like, oh, they'll be mason, so they'll go and carry mortar for people to build their houses. And others were just ascribing their, their career, so they defined their careers for them. And I told them that, look, me, I'll go outside the country and pursue my education. I'm telling you, the school that I, I went, if I should take you to that school, you'd be like, and this is this where you went to school? Yes, that is why I went to school. But my words were positive. Because as young as I was, I always declare words of positive. It's either I'm singing or I'm declaring words or I'm praying. I didn't have anybody who kind of was there, apart from it was myself and my mom, always. It was not easy for us. Life was not what easy. But I was constant at my words. And the final person that I spoke to, I remember this woman, may not remember. Was my stepmom. I was walking with her and I was like, we're talking. It's like me, I'll go far. I will pursue my education outside the country. And anytime I talk to them, they think like, this guy, is he crazy? <laughs> Look at this dry land. We don't even know anybody in, Amer in, in, the, in the country, uh, outside the country. We don't have anybody. We don't have money. No passport. You, your dad and mom has not even don't have passport. Why is it that you always want to go outside? And then after that, when I got to eighth grade, God showed me a revelation. And in that revelation, I was at a place. And that place was full of lights. The bridges that like the roads that were different. It was nothing to, co to be compared to any road in Ghana. And when I woke up from my sleep, I was like, why did I come back here? <laughs> because where I found myself was so great that I didn't want to just wake up. <laughs> I just wanted to be there, honestly. And I want to let you know that words are powerful. Fast forward... I found my wife, and she's here. She was here, and now I joined her and my kids here in America. So the words that I spoke came to pass. I came to pursue my graduate school here. 
I did my degree here. My, my, my master is here. You will eat the fruits of your lips. It was difficult. I'm not saying we, we didn't have, the, I mean, I'm telling you, there were, there were times where in college, I didn't have anything to eat. Where that day, my, my, my friend and I, we took water, added sugar to it because that's what we had, and this very hard, solid bread, and we just ate it. We sat there, and then we stirred the water with sugar, and we drank it because I can't eat with my empty stomach. I can't sleep with my empty stomach. I had to eat something. There was one time, it was not just bread and sugar. That day, there was nothing in the room. You have to sleep. So, you know, when you're going to sleep, that you think that, okay, this night I had to eat, I had to get dinner, but then there's no dinner. Already right, hadn't been breakfast, they hadn't been lunch. You are waiting for dinner and there's no dinner. So you have to go. You are not fasting. <laughs> this is not fasting. If I was fasting, it's different. I wasn't fasting. But I kept my confession. I did not let the spirit of depression hit me. In that circumstance, I had stomach, my stomach was hurting me as well. I'd gone to the hospitals, the doctors, and they were giving me medicine upon medicine, and any time they give me the medicine, it hurt me. If I ate any food, I'll just be rolling on the floor. It was massive. One day I was like, no, this thing cannot take over my life. This, in my, 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 this happened um, when I was in my second, third year to fourth year. I always take medicine. I always take medicine. Just to keep me, just to sustain the pain. Just to keep me moving. And I went into a prayer garden. Put my hand in my, uh, on my tummy. By then I think I spoke with my wife about it. And then my brother-in-law Abraham and other people started praying worse. I threw all my medicine away. It's like I'm not going to that doctor's. I'm not going to a doctor's again. I'm not saying throw medicine away. <laughs> I threw all my medicine. I threw all the medicine away. Changed my diet and trusted on, on the Lord. For over ten years now, I fast. I don't see pain. No pain in my tummy again. I'm telling you, for over ten years, I was telling somebody. And the person told me that you give too much credit to God, but who should I give credit to? It's like maybe your body healed itself. My body did not heal itself. I knew how I was feeling. The before and after my confession. I want to let you know, if you love life, speak life. Your circumstances should not define what to say. Amen. We go through issues in life. Everybody go through it. We all go through it. There are struggles and there are hassles in life. In marriage, in our academics, our jobs, everything that we do. We go through issues and tough times, difficulties in life. But remember that None of these situations should push you to say evil about yourself. Amen. Or about your children. Because you eat it. Tell your child he's a fool. You'll be a foolish man or a foolish uh, 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 woman. Yeah, sometimes they can drive us crazy, but that word should never come out of our mouth. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2. You are a snare by the words of your mouth. You are what? A snare. You are snared. You will be snared by your own words. 
If you speak life, you'll be in the trap of life every day. If you speak abundance, bless them, you'll be, you, you'll be in that. So you are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. In America, if the president wants to do something, he doesn't just get up from the White House and come to our various homes to tell us what to do, right? They will just have to just get on their podium and speak to the whole world. <laughs> the nation, address the nation with what? Words. And right after they've, they've, they've finished talking, we'll all begin to obey what they have said or do it. The power of what? The tongue. The power of the tongue. The power of the tongue. You can use words to build. You can use words to tear down. You can use words to build, and you can use words to do what? To tear down. You can use words to kill, and you can use words to give life. You can use words to, 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 to raise somebody from, from death to life, and you can use words to also put somebody to their grief. Jesus used words to heal. Jesus used words to raise the dead. Jesus used words in all that he did. He spoke to the storms to be silent, to become words. Words are powerful. And there are times, sometimes when I'm there, I'm reminded of the power of, of, the, of my tongue because if you are doing deliverance, right, and let's say a demon is, is manifesting and you just say that my hand is sword, you cannot hold my hand, that demon... Right? That person is aggressive because of the demon. But once you declare that, look, my hand is a sword. You cannot touch this hand. If they dare t- touch it, they, you see them screaming. Because you did what? You didn't change your hand to what? To, 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 to sword. But with the words, this hand was transformed to what? To a sword in the spirit. And so that demon could not do what? Touch it. I've done this in several times. Sometimes you say that there's fire all around me. You cannot touch me. You cannot come closer to me. And you'll be within that area. Words are powerful. You don't need to scream it. It will work. It works. A lot of people, their life is going down, 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 down. Not because of anything. Because of a word they spoke against themselves. Don't let anybody speak evil against you. Don't let anybody label you when you are not that label. Somebody can label you. I'm telling you, sometimes per race, your color, where you come from, your accent, and they can label you and now speak it as a word. If you accept it, it will come to pass in your life. You get to a company, they'll look at you and be like, okay, forget about these people. Forget about this person. He is that. She is that. And those words get into your ears. And then it begins to work on you. Words are powerful. Don't let anybody bring your future down, your greatness down by what? Words. For there is power in the tongue. In your tongue and the tongue of people. That is why you have to rebuke people when they say wrong things against you. Amen. Me, if you, if, you, if you look into my face and you say what I am not to me, I'll rebuke you. <laughs> I remember one funny thing that happened when I was... Uh, when I proposed to my wife and I was waiting for the response. <laughs> you know, our proposal is different from the one you do here. So in Ghana, you tell the woman, the woman has to accept it. So until, they accept, until she accepts it, <laughs> you still have to be waiting. <laughs> and when it was approaching, somebody just came to me and said, forget about that woman, she's not going to respond. Forget about her, forget about her. I was like, look, if you, <laughs> if you don't stop saying what you are saying, you'll not be my friend again. What kind of, I pray with you, so stop doing that. Don't say that again. I mean, that day, I I nearly just (laughs) strangled him. (laughs) 
I'm telling you, oh, when I, I, have, I had Kizia's picture and I took, no, she had not accepted. I had Kizia's picture, so I go to my friends. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is the woman I'm going to marry. This is the woman I'm going to marry. Oh, I'm going to marry her in future. Like, Where is she? Oh, she's, she's, she's in the U.S. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Do you know what she, she's doing in the U.S. and you're obsessed about all this married thing, Kezia? Stop talking about Kezia. And anytime you did that, I'll just cross you out of the list. You don't have good mouth. <laughs> you don't have good mouth. Cross those who have negative things, saying negative things on your head. Just cross them. Tell, just tell them that, look, you better speak good things around me or you stay in your room. So I don't hear what you say. Words are powerful. And that is why we have to be aware of negative profession. The words we profess, right? Our confession, our declaration, the statements we make. Beware of negative words. As, as I have said already, Circumstances should not let you change your words. Sometimes we follow the norm, the norm, the culture, the system, the status quo. So what people are saying is what we see. There's one common word in America that is loser. You are such a loser. Especially if you are not doing, maybe they think you are not smart or you are not, <laughs> people be, you are a loser. Never accept it. You make mistakes in life. It's okay. Right? Your mistakes does not mean that you're a failure. Even when you fail, failure will teach you a lesson. So why should we label people about some of these things? Don't let anybody tag you. If someone label you, I'm telling you, before you accept it, you, you accept it, and then you'll be like, every day, you're like a failure. That's what they are saying. That's what they are saying. And it's true. I'm, I'm telling you, people can let you define you well. They'll dress you, put the right tie on your neck, and label you so when you are there, you cannot take it off. Be strong in the mind. Be strong in what? In the mind. Because worse works on the mind. One of the things that is keeping me also is that there are a lot of prophecies that have been spoken about me and so many dreams and revelations that I've received, and they keep strengthening me because these are powerful words that have been spoken upon my life. And I, I always want to live to see it. So I don't get... Discourage easily about some things. If you want to discourage me, don't worry. I'll just go into my prayer closet and start praying. I'll just blow some tongues upon myself and just get myself up and running and going. Because words can drain you. Words can drain you. Don't let anybody's words drain you. Let the Spirit of God drive your confession. Let the Spirit of God drive your confession. Everything that you say, let it be driven by the Spirit of God. Let it be driven by the Word of God. Don't say it because you're in difficult moments. Don't say things upon yourself because you are, you, 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 things are not going as you want it to be. Don't say it. Because things are not going the way it ought not, they, uh, they are not going well. That is why you have to begin to stand and make positive declarations. Or else, worse, you can be, you can be sitting here, you are free, you are not in jail, but worse can put you in jail. The worst of people the words of your own mouth, the words of the people around you can jail you. You're being changed by the words, words of people. If you have said some words with your mouth and you shouldn't have, that you shouldn't have said it, 
that maybe something went on and out of frustration, you declare that ah, I'm, I'm this. I'm... You are not down. One of the common ways that comes out of our mouth is what? Dummy, I'm down. Every word that falls out of your mouth, listen to me, there are two spirits, good and bad. If a good word falls out of your mouth, the spirit of God, God takes it and let it and makes sure that it will work to your favor. If an evil word comes out of your mouth, the enemy takes it and uses it against you because it is your own word. So you sign your own life by your words. Never let um, frustration, difficulties, let you utter words that you don't have to. One of the common things that people do is that, especially if, if and excuse me, women, I'm not against you, but there are some women, especially if their white husbands are not responsible. Oh my goodness, that foolish man. That, and, and you always be using bad words, right? Against him to the children. You become like your dad. You will fail and be a loser like your dad. Ah, never. 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 Words are like seed. It falls down to germinate. I'm telling you. If it falls, it will germinate. So don't let that seed fall for it to germinate. And if it is as fallen, it is not too late to pull it. You can use the same mouth, the same tongue to do what? To pull it, to uproot it, to root it out. I said it, but no, I, I, I reverse it. In the name of Jesus, I declare that this words will never come to pass in my life or in my children's life. Declare it. There's nothing like it is too late. The Bible says that you pull down and you throw down. You tear things down and you will establish a new thing. So your ways are powerful. They are powerful. They are powerful. They are powerful. And don't let the enemy steal that power from you. The power of confession. You wake up in the morning, you receive a, a bad report. Don't cry over it. Just take that report, put it down, and start circling around it in the name of Jesus. I declare this is not my portion. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, this is the re result I'm, I'm having. But in the name of Jesus, I am not who the report is saying. In Jesus' name. In the name, I will not fail. I've seen, yes, they are saying, that, yes, this will not take me far, but I'll go far. Let me tell you one thing. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. I have a lot. See, one of my professors, my last year, I did, when I did my, uh, we did our thesis, we, we wrote everything, myself and my friend, a very good friend, who worked together. And I was sitting in the, in the face of this professor. The professor looked at us in the face, like, you're not serious. You never go far. Just told us. Will not go far. Are you God? To define my future? Especially when you characterize when you characterize yourself with Christ. Because that friend of mine, he was sold out for God. He was sold out for Christ Jesus. He's not a pastor. I'm telling you, I finished school. Right after school, when I worked out of the school, two months, I got a, a new job. A job. Great, good job. Five, after five years, I worked for five years. Some of my, student, my colleagues were still in the house, and they didn't get a job. We serve a living God. He spoke the word. I went to my prayer closet. I was like, you, you are a professor. It's not your words. It's not work in my life. That is how, look, if you tell me something, I go back, and I'll just declare God. Let them know and put them to shame. Amen. That is my simple thing. Put them to shame. Amen. So that somebody will not say that, oh, look at him. He didn't amount to anything. Yes, I make mistakes. Yes, we are human beings. We all make mistakes. Who hasn't make it, made a mistake before? But you use words to do what? To correct. 
and then keep moving forward because the words of men can cripple you and put pin you down. And if you don't take care, you will never move. You will always be pinned at one place and marking time, marking time. You are moving. The leg is moving, but it's not moving forward. Your words can cause you to move forward. So if somebody is pronouncing words of discouragement to you, reverse them with the words of God. Reverse it with the spirit of God. Reverse it by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, invoke God's presence in your ways to act on your behalf. Joshua stood and he said that the sun should stand and the sun stood. Did not move. Ways. Elijah called fire from heaven. It came with words. You can also call things to be in existence in your life with your own words. There is power. Why do you think that a lot of... Now, look, if you go to the schools, they, are, they want to teach about witchcraft, and they want to teach about all these kind of um, thing, sexual um, what, what not in, in, in schools. Right? They want to teach all these... Why do they want to teach? Because if they start pushing those words into the ears of the children, they will grow to be what they want them to be. Who told you words are not powerful? Words are even powerful than knife. Because before you bring your, before you reach me with a knife, I will be able to maybe go back or swerve. But the words will just get on my face. <laughs> you spew it, then it gets into my ear. Sometimes you don't, you want to shake it off, but it's still difficult. <laughs> Use the word of God to pull it down. Words are powerful. So make sure our words do not invoke distraction. Because some words of people have destroyed marriages, it has destroyed children, it has destroyed people, killed people. People have gone into their grave very young because of words. Depression, a word that was spoken into the ears of a child or somebody, a teenager in school, about uh, some years ago, has made a person become suicidal. So many people are killing themselves because of words that they have heard. Right, you are not nobody. You are nothing. You you never grow. You never become great. You are dumb. You are not. I mean, see, these are all negative words, right? Negative words, negative words, negative words, and it invokes distraction, spirit of distraction, so that the child grows and becomes a bad boy, bad girl, right? You 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 not be great. These are bad words that we should never let it fall out of our mouth. If your child comes home and he tells you that somebody told me I'm this, just correct the child that you are not who they are saying you are. If you go and your teacher tells you that you are you are, you never be great, you tell your you tell your child that look, you are born great. One day my my daughter asks me, but you always say that I'm great. <laughs> you know, tell them you are born great. That's one of the things that if I'm taking taking my children to school and yeah, tell you you are great in the car. I'm telling you you are born great. You know that right? You are born great. Keep telling them, you are great. You are great. I tell you, before I had you, this is what God showed to me. I will keep telling you the vision about your life. Let's do that. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 14 says that. Romans 12, 14. Bless those who curse you. Bless those who do what? Who persecute you? If someone persecutes you, do what? Bless and do not. Bless and do not curse. Bless and do not curse. So if you are there and curses is coming out of your mouth, do what? Remind yourself that you are to bless and not to. You know, always saying spewing bad things is easy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Using those words, you know, I don't want to use them here. Then use them. Bless and do not curse. And don't let any corruption, corruptible words come out of your mouth. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let's train ourselves. Let's train ourselves. He says that 
Ephesians 4, 29 says that, let no corrupt, corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Don't let any corruptible word come out of your mouth. Look, if you want active word to be great, declare greatness upon active word church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I repeat it again. You are in active word church. Speak it greatness. Amen. Speak it greatness. And God will begin to give you, will reveal to you the great, how great this church is to you. So you work towards it accordingly. Let no corrupt, corruptible word proceed out of your mouth. Within the church and the people in the church, let's say good things and good words among ourselves. Don't let anybody come to you and tell you that, oh, have you seen Dr. Musaki? Oh, you saw last time what he did. I mean, what? When the person brings it, you're like, stop it there. Bless and do not curse. Mm -hmm. Say good things about him. Amen. Because your words will make and will make people. We don't want to make people in the church. We want to make them. Mm -hmm. So let us bless and not curse. Mm -hmm. If you have nothing to say, yeah. keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> if you have nothing to say, if you don't have any blessings to just pew on me, be quiet. It is better for you to be quiet than to say the words that will make me like uh, all of us to practice. It is easy for all of us, especially when we are we are, we are angry or we are upset. No, all of us. We all fall short of this. All of us. We all have to train ourselves. It's possible. There's power in your mouth. God can use you to resurrect the dead out of your mouth. God can use you to heal cancer from your mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. On the tables of your heart, right? Your heart is the central point of your humanity that makes spiritual decisions. And so if the heart is set right, it will always spew forth things that are life. Let us set our heart right. Herodias, you all know her, right? Yeah. Herod's wife. Stole it from her brother, Philip. John the Baptist spoke about it. Herodias didn't like it. She kept it in her heart. Right from that time, she, has, she, she had wanted to kill John the Baptist. And so she executed it using words. Words, words. And it came to pass when she sent, she asked the daughter to request for the head of John the Baptist with words. She used her words to get John the Baptist's head. Words. Spoke those words, and the king could not do anything about it and executed it. The words that you speak can let somebody execute negative or positive action. You can tell your daughter or your son something and it will destroy their marriage. Mm -hmm. A lot of marriages have collapsed because of the words from some people. Some friends started putting some words in the ears of some people and their marriages are collapsed. Mm. Words are powerful. Words has destroyed so many things in this world. Words. 
A president can sit in their room and issue a command that, look, make sure that you fly that, you, 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 you go and blast some place. And that word will be executed because of the command through words. They are powerful. We should not play with words. Our words must be inspired by the Holy Spirit. You have power in your mouth. It is only the fools. According to Proverbs 18, verse 6, says that a fool's lips, a fool's lips enter into contention and his mouth calls blue. So, <laughs> amen. Your words can cause you to be beaten. Number seven, verse seven, 18, seven. 18, seven says that a fool's mouth is his distraction and his lips are the snare of his soul. A fool's word, mouth, is his distraction. So if a person opens their mouth foolishly to say things they don't have to say, it will destroy they themselves and it will snare their soul. So we have to speak life. I want to tell you this. God said it first. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. And there was light. When he said it, it happened. You speak. You see. You enjoy the fruits. Three things. What you speak, right? You speak something. You don't just speak, but you speak because you want to see it manifest. And when it manifests, you enjoy the fruit of the manifestation of those words. God spoke. And when he spoke, he didn't be like, okay, I've said it, just let it just be there. So whenever I want it to happen, then it happens. No, he spoke. And he saw that what he spoke is good. And he saw the fruitfulness of it. Whatever you speak, speak to see it. And speak to enjoy the fruitfulness of it. Now, if you are speaking something and what you are speaking, you will not enjoy the fruitfulness of it. Don't speak it. SSE. Mm. Speak, see, enjoy. Speak, see, enjoy the fruit of your mouth. Speak life. Make positive confession. Make positive confession. The Bible says you declare a thing and it will come to pass. It will establish in your life. Right? Job chapter, Job, Job um, 22, 28. Speak life. Whatever you want to see, speak. I'm the head and not the tail. I'll always be above and not beneath. It doesn't matter what is happening in my life, in my home, in in, in the circumstances around me. I'm great. I'm born great, and I'll live to see it in the name of Jesus. I don't care the time that is taken. It will come to pass. As he's spoken, it will surely come to pass. In the name of Jesus, I declare in Jesus' name, you hold yourself. Hey, I'm telling you, the women... Those who are married and, and are expecting a baby or you have a baby, you hold the tummy, hold the tummy and pray over the child. You are, you are, you are great. You will never be sick in the mighty name of Jesus. You will never be a child that will be a loser in the name of Jesus. If you're a man, you put your hand on the belly of your wife and declare some words over there. Amen. I have three kids. It's worked. Tell them they are wise right from the womb. They'll be caught up in that word. If you keep telling them they are ugly, they'll be ugly. Don't cry over your children because you are depressed. Sing unto the children right in your womb. Your words carries life. Jesus says that these words that I speak to you, John chapter 6, verse 63. 
John 6, 63, it says that the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The same way the words you speak, you want it to be spirit and you want it to be what? Life. Because we are imitators of Jesus. So the words I speak, I speak to you, it should be supposed to be life. It's supposed to be life. It's supposed to be life. So if you say something and it's not life, just say, I'm sorry. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't mean it. All right? Go and change it. I will go and do what? Change it. Words create. Use words create. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 says that by faith we understand. Hebrews 11 3 says by faith we understand that the world, the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which we, which are seen were not made of things which are invisible. The things that we, are, we see right now, they were made by words. Not any, not any big, big bang theory. Word my God's word. Your words are life. Your words are life. So speak it. Don't accept what, do not accept who you are not. If someone tells you you are this, you are not, you are a failure, you are not a failure. You are not a failure. You will not prosper. You will not amount to anything. You tell them, that is not who I am. Don't accept words of failure, words that are not good to you. The word of God says that you are a chosen generation. Second, First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are... You are a holy nation. You are special people. You are special. You are not ordinary. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 8 says that, uh, blessed be the Lord. It says that, blessed be the Lord and the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with, with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Someone tells you you are cursed. You are not cursed. You are blessed. Tell you that, oh, this wide, this, this range of, of, of race, these people are blessed, these people are damned, these people are this. Who told you? Even if there's a curse in your family, you can use words to change it. You are not cursed. You are blessed beyond measure. You are the head and not the tail. The final thing that I want to end with, if you have your Bible, just um, I want you to open to some. Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Verse 14 through 17. As I end with this, he says that, I will praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Let your soul know it. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, and skillfully wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance, being, not, being yet unformed, and in your book, they all were written. The days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How great is the sum of them. Verse 18. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I will still, I am still with you. Amen. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are what? Fearfully, fearfully and wonderfully made. You were skillfully made by God. He took his time to, to make you. You are skillfully made. He did not just throw anything on you, just, oh, come here. If you look at some of us are faces. You'd be like, okay, God really made me well. You know, I'm very good looking. 
you know? <laughs> God did not just throw the eye somewhere so that the eye will be here. Amen. So if somebody is telling you that you are not handsome or you are not beautiful, it's a lie. You tell her, if, if, I'm not, if I'm not beautiful, then God would have put my eye here. One here, one there. See how ugly you be. You are beautiful. You are handsome. You are great. And that is... <laughs> and this is the last word I want to leave you with. Speak life, no matter what happens to you. Speak life. Confess the Lord Jesus Christ so you'll be able to speak the right words. If you don't know Jesus, you ought to know Jesus. Or else, the power of darkness will toss you to and fro to speak negative words. Amen. Father, I thank you for your word. Even as we are going to zoom into a time of prayer, I pray that you be the Lord and the master of our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you so much for making us great. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. As you guys know, uh, the last... On the last Sunday of the month, after Pastor Hayford prays, we also zoom into a few more minutes of prayer. And that's what we are going to do um, for the next uh, couple of minutes. Um, Pastor Hayford has said a lot. Um, and so we are going to, we don't just hear them, but we also put them into practice. So we are going to go into a time of prayer. I remember um, a couple of years ago, I was talking to a friend of mine, and she was like, hey, yeah, I don't even know. In my family, nobody has children. All my sisters have married and no children. And I was like, but your mother had children. That's you. <laughs> you know, I was like, that can change with you, really. And sometimes we are not supposed to, uh, we are not supposed to accept certain things that uh, look like a familiar trend, amen? And so I want us to, um, we are going to pray. I remember when I was uh, pregnant with Jeremiah, and I saw, like, a friend of mine had just had a baby.